Hey guys, this is Eric from Invensys, and I welcome you to our YouTube channel. Today's session will discuss the monitor and control group process in detail. So to watch the video till the very end. Before we start, let us quickly go through the agenda. To begin with, we will understand what the monitor and control process group is, and then talk about the processes in the monitor and control process group. Next, we will talk about inputs and the tools and techniques used for the monitor and control process group, and finally, we will conclude this session by addressing the outputs for the monitor and control process. I hope the agenda is clear. If you like this video, do subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also, to learn more about project management and its practices, check out Invensys Learning's Project Management Certification Training on Prince2, Project Management Fundamentals, PO, Capman and MSP All of the necessary information is given in the description box below. To begin with, let's start with understanding the basics of the monitor and control group process. What is monitor and control process? As the title suggests, it is the process of tracking actual project performance in several planned project management activities, and you provide performance reports on the progress. The monitoring and control process is a control function that takes place in all phases from the start to the completion of a project. Throughout the entire process of monitoring and control, the project manager's duty is to balance the several requirements that arise from various knowledge areas. The main benefit of this process is that stakeholders can understand the current status of the project, the steps that must be taken, the budget, schedule, and scope forecasts. For example, a project manager may experience a situation where a project is completed on time, but does not meet the quality standards set out in the project management plan. Similarly, projects can be important, but unfortunately they exceed time and cost limits. Therefore, the process of monitoring and controlling project work is very important. In the next part of today's section we will talk about the processes. The monitoring and controlling process group has 12 processes, namely Monitor and control project work Perform integrated change control Validate scope Control scope Control schedule Control costs Control quality Control resources Monitor stakeholder engagement Monitor communications Monitor risks and Control procurements. Moving ahead, we will discuss each of these processes in detail. Firstly, we have the monitor and control project work. This involves the tracking, reviewing, and regulating the progress of the project to meet the performance objectives defined in the project management plan. This process occurs throughout the project and belongs to the integration management knowledge area. The next process is perform integrated change control. This process helps review change requests, approve changes, and eventually manage the changes to the required deliverables, project documents, project management plan, and organizational process assets. This process can also occur throughout the project and belongs to the integration management knowledge area. The third process is to validate scope. It is simply the formal procedure to accept the completed project deliverables. This process is performed periodically and belongs to the scope management knowledge area. The next process is control scope. This process allows you to monitor the status of the project and product scope. It will also allow you to manage changes to the scope baseline. This process can occur throughout the project and belongs to the scope management knowledge area. Next, we have the control schedule process. This process monitors the status of the project to update the project schedule. It also manages changes to the schedule baseline. This can be performed at any time of the project and belongs to the schedule management knowledge area. The sixth process of the monitoring and controlling process group is control costs. This process monitors the project status to update the project costs and manage changes to the cost baseline at any point of the project. It belongs to the cost management knowledge area. The next process is control quality. Here, one must monitor and control the quality of all the performed activities and measure its performance. This will ensure that the project outputs are up to the mark and meet the customer's expectations. It belongs to the quality management knowledge area. Then we have control resources. This process ensures that physical resources are available as planned, monitoring performance and taking corrective action. It is performed throughout the project and belongs to the resource management knowledge area. The next process on the list is monitor stakeholder engagement. This process monitors the project stakeholders' relationships. It adjusts strategies and plans for engaging stakeholders. It belongs to the stakeholder management knowledge area and can be performed throughout the project. 
The next process is to monitor communications. As the name suggests, it helps monitor the project's needs, and its stakeholders are met in regular intervals. It belongs to the communications management knowledge area and is performed throughout the project. The eleventh process is to monitor risks. It belongs to the risk management knowledge area and is performed throughout the project. This process monitors the implementation of risk response plans and tracks identified risks, analyzes new risks, and eventually evaluates the effectiveness of the risk process. The last process is control procurements. It manages procurement relationships, monitors contract performance, makes changes and corrections as needed, and finally closes out contracts. It is performed as and when required within the project and belongs to the procurement management knowledge area. Now that we have discussed the monitor and control group processes in detail, let us discuss the inputs, tools, techniques, and outputs involved in monitoring and controlling the project work process. Monitor and control process, inputs. Firstly, we have the project management plan. The project management plan is a formal document that defines how a project will be carried out. The subsidiary plans and the project baselines form the foundation for controlling the project. A project management plan involves focusing on all subjects of the project. The PMP includes the following subsidiary plans, which are explained under developing a project management plan. Then, we have the project document. We will discuss various components that the project document comprises. To begin with, we have the assumption log. It contains information about expectations and points that might have an effect on the project. Then, we have the basis of estimates. It simply indicates how various estimates were borrowed and can be used to decide on how to respond to the difference of opinion. Next is the cost forecast. Based on the project's previous performance, use cost forecasts to determine if the project is within the defined tolerances for your budget and if any necessary changes will occur. Then there is the issue log. The issue log is used to document and monitor who is responsible for fixing a particular problem within the scheduled date. Also, there are the lessons learned register. The lessons learned register may contain information about effective response to deviations in corrective and preventive measures. On the other hand, milestone lists show the planned dates for a particular milestone and are also used to see if you have reached the planned milestone. The quality report also includes questions about quality control. It is also known as a suggestion for improving processes, projects, and products. Corrective action recommendations include rework, defect, defect repair, and 100% inspection. And a summary of the findings from the quality control process. We have a risk register that provides details on the threats and opportunities that have occurred during the execution of the project. Risk reports provide information about the entire project and specific individual risks. Finally, there is a schedule forecast. Based on the project's previous performance, use deadline forecasts to determine if the project is within the tolerances defined for the schedule and identify the required change requests. The next input to the monitoring and control process is work performance information. Work performance data is an output of the direct and managed project work process in which the data is collected, analyzed, and integrated. This produces job performance information that provides a solid foundation for project decision making. This produces job performance information that provides a solid foundation for project decision making. Work performance data is a direct output of the direct and managed project work process. Here, the data is collected, analyzed, and integrated. This produces work performance information for providing a solid understanding for making project decisions. For example, with the performance information, project managers can use performance information to understand the status of services offered, the implementation status of change requests, and indicate the expected completion time. The next input is agreements. Here, the procurement agreement contains terms and conditions that allow you to integrate other points that the buyer specifies concerning what the seller is to provide. Suppose the project outsources some of the work. In that case, the project manager oversees the contractor's work to ensure that all contracts meet the specific requirements of the project while following the organization's procurement guidelines and policies. Moving on to the next input we have, enterprise environmental factors. The enterprise environmental factors are conditions that are not under the project team's control. They vary greatly depending on the type of environment. Let's take a closer look at each of these elements. Firstly, we have the government or industry standards. This includes aspects such as regulatory agencies, codes of conduct, product standards, quality standards, and processing standards that affect the process of monitoring and controlling project work. There are existing human resources. 
the level of organizational skills, disciplines, and knowledge of design, development, legal, contract, and purchasing skills that influence the oversight and management process. Then we have stakeholder risk tolerances, this is an important aspect of all phases of project work. Project managers need to understand the stakeholder risk tolerance for how much negative impact they can withstand during the life cycle. Also, there is commercial databases. You must acquire knowledge of standardized cost estimation data and information about industry risk research and risk databases from previous projects to better understand the working process of your current project. Finally, the most important tool is the project management information system. These are the system tools and techniques used in project management to provide information. Project managers use methods and tools to collect, combine, and distribute information electronically and manually. We have organizational process assets as the next input for the monitor and control process. An organization's process assets are plans, processes, policies, procedures, and knowledge bases that are unique to the executing organization. The assets may be grouped into two main categories, processes and procedures and the corporate knowledge base. The processes and procedures can be segregated into three stages. Initiating and planning is the first stage. This includes implementing guidelines and standards to tailor the organization's standard processes and procedures to the project's specific needs. To monitor and control a project, you need guidelines, effective planning of organizational standards such as product and project life cycles, and ways to maintain quality guidelines and procedures. The next stage of the processes and procedures are executing, monitoring, and controlling. This is simply a method to change the existing control procedures and document how the changes are approved and validated. The process also includes monitoring financial management procedures, problem and defect management procedures, organizational communication requirements, change and risk management procedures, process measurement and lessons learned database. The last stage of the processes and procedures is closing. During the closure phase, the project manager oversees project closure guidelines that focus on lessons learned, final project audits, evaluations, and product validation. The other category of organizational process assets is the corporate knowledge base. The knowledge base will consist of several versions and baselines of the policies, procedures, and project documents. The knowledge base also includes a financial database that contains information about hours worked, costs incurred, budgets, and project cost overruns. A project manager should know two kinds of information. Firstly, the historical information and lessons learned from previous project records and performance. Secondly, she slash he should also have corporate knowledge of the issues and defects so that they can control and resolve the same in any problems that arise. Finally, the corporate knowledge base should also contain information about the components. This includes insights into the process measurement database and information about project files from the previous project, for example, the scope, cost, schedule baselines, and project calendars. Now let's talk about monitor and control process, tools and techniques. To begin with, we have expert judgment. To ensure that the project's performance is as expected, the project manager and the project management team use expert judgment to interpret the information provided by the monitoring and control process. These expertise should be obtained from individuals or groups that specialize in the following topics. Earned value analysis. Interpretation and contextualization of data. Techniques to estimate duration and costs. Trend analysis. Technical knowledge of the industry and focus area of the project. Risk management and contract management. The next important tool is data analysis. It is the process that uses past and present project data to enable effective decisions on project delivery. There are six types of data analysis techniques. We will discuss each of these in detail. Firstly, we have alternatives analysis. It is used to select corrective actions or a combination of corrective actions and precautions to be taken in the event of a deviation in the project management process. Then, we have the cost-benefit analysis. Cost-benefit analysis helps determine the best corrective action to reduce the cost of project deviations. Moving on, we have earned value analysis. Earned value provides an integrated view of the scope, schedule, and cost performance. On the other hand, root cause analysis focuses on identifying the main reason for the problem. Therefore, you can use it to identify the reasons for the discrepancy in the areas that the project manager should focus on to achieve the project objectives. Trend analysis is used to predict future performance based on past results. 
Anticipate expected deviations in your project and warn your project manager that problems may occur later in the schedule if established trends continue. This information is available early in the project timeline, giving the project team time to analyze and correct any anomalies. In addition, the results of the trend analysis will help recommend preventative measures as needed. Finally, we have a variance analysis. It reviews the differences between planned and actual performance. This includes time period estimates, cost estimates, resource utilization, resource rates, technical performance, and other metrics. Variance analysis can be performed in any area of knowledge based on specific variables. Variance analysis checks for deviations from an integrated perspective when monitoring and controlling project work, taking into account cost, time, technology, and resource deviations to get a complete overview of project deviations. This will allow you to initiate appropriate preventative or corrective action. The next technique of the monitor and control process is decision-making. The decision-making method requires all individuals, project management teams, and stakeholders to agree on a single decision throughout the voting process. This means that the project can be run within a project management framework. The last technique is meetings. Meetings can be direct, formal, informal, or virtual. This can include members of the project team, stakeholders, and other members involved in the ongoing project. The main agenda is to disseminate information about the project and to ensure that expectations are translated and come to an end. In the next part of this session, we will talk about the outputs of the monitor and control process. The first output is change requests. After comparing the actual results with the planned results, the change request guides the project. You can instruct your project and product scope, quality requirements, schedules, and cost base to grow, adjust, or shrink. These changes pave the way for recording and documenting new requirements. It can also affect project management plans, documents, or product performance. It is important to know that all changes that meet the project's change control criteria should go through the integrated change control process established for the project. Change requests may include a few aspects, which we will discuss in detail. A deliberate activity that realigns the performance of the project work with the project management plan is known as corrective action. On the other hand, an intentive activity that ensures the future performance of the project work associated with the project management plan is called preventive action. Also, defect repair is a calculated activity to modify an unusual product or product component. The second output is the work performance reports. These are physical representations of job performance information compiled into project documents to generate decisions, actions, and awareness. In addition, information maintenance, storage, and distribution require representation in project documents. These work performance reports are a breakdown of the project documentation, and these reports can be made available to key stakeholders. The third output is the project management plan updates. Changes identified during this process can affect the overall project management plan. These changes may be updated in the project management plan after being processed by the appropriate change management process. The elements of the project management plan that may need to be updated are Scope management plan Requirements management plan Schedule management plan Cost management plan Quality Management Plan Scope Baseline Schedule Baseline and Cost Baseline The final output is the Project Documents Updates. Project documents that may need updating include Schedule and Cost Forecast is a document that stores information on the schedule and cost limit of the concerned project. Also, it consists of a work performance report. This document contains information about hours, quality standards, and the overall capabilities of the team. It consists of a issue log. That is a document containing information about problems that occurred during the project monitoring and control process, how long it took to resolve the problem, and the results of the actions taken. Changes always occur during the project. Even these well-crafted plans have scenarios that lead to different results when compared to actual plan values. Therefore, it is essential to project work processes for monitoring and control to determine these changes. Monitoring and controlling the work processes of a project is important to achieving the project's desired results. Because you can't know how your project is going without measuring performance, and that is a significant risk of project failure. And with this, we have come to the end of this video. I hope it was helpful. If this has spiked your interest and you want to know more about project management, I recommend you to opt for PMP certification training and clear the exam. At Invensys Learning, we provide various PMP certifications that will pave the way for your career in project management. 
We are accredited by respective governing bodies or courses in line with their guidelines for each of these certifications. After enrollment, you will get lifetime access to a personalized learning management system. LMS has all the class recordings, live class, webinar links, assignments, and case studies to practice. All classes are live instructor-led delivered by trainers with rich domain experience. Thank you guys. See you in the next session.